Hey everyone, so in this quick video, I'm just gonna give a rundown of all of the different tools and scripts and plugins that I use while I'm animating. I've gotten quite a few questions on some of my tutorial videos where I actually get my scripts, how to download them and use them. So basically, I'm just gonna run through all of the scripts that I use basically every time that I animate. So this video will kind of serve as the main hub that I'll always link to in my videos that you can watch this video and kind of see where I actually get my scripts. And then you can download them and set them up for yourself. So I've got Maya open up here. And the first thing that I wanna talk about is the Animbot plugin. This is a really, really powerful suite of tools. If you haven't heard of it, I highly recommend hopping onto the website and checking it out. I'll actually pull it up here so we can kind of look and just get a quick overview of it. This is the Animbot website. This is where you can actually download Animbot. There is a 30 day free trial. And then after that, you'll need to actually pay for the software. But if you haven't used this before, I highly recommend just checking out the 30 day free trial and seeing if you like it. I use this all the time in all of my videos. So I'll actually scroll down here. You can see there's a couple different pricing options and different plans here. I think the one I actually have is this eco plan. You can take a look at some of the other plans as well on here. But really, if you were to get any of the tools that I use and just get one of them, then I would probably get Animbot. I'll go ahead and close that. And we can just give a quick rundown of Animbot. If you've never used it before, it's down here on the timeline. Now, obviously you could place this anywhere in your Maya UI, but I have it kind of stacked right above my actual time slider. So Animbot is really in depth on the different types of tools it has and really all of the things that it allows you to do when you're animating. And you can get into some pretty complex things. I have an actual video on my YouTube channel showing how to use Animbot to set up a constraint system without actually utilizing any of Maya's basic constraints. You can set up a full constraint system just using Animbot and it's quite a bit faster to set up that way as well. If you want to, you can check out that video. But you also have options like over here, we have temp pivot so we can place a new sort of pivot point, a temporary pivot point on a specific control. Uh, say, for example, if you were maybe having a hand kind of peel off the table, you could change the temp pivot to actually be at the tip of the fingers so that when you animate the hand control, you can actually sort of pivot from the tip of the fingers, making it easier to get peel off and that kind of thing. And then you also have things like the tween over here. We can basically blend between the two keyframes. You can open up this option. You can see you have a bunch of different options for actually setting up the tween. So you can do blended default, blend ease. Over here, we actually have this sort of like push pull. So it'll allow you to actually adjust and push your curves. You can see a GIF here kind of showing an example of what this actually does. And the other thing with Animbot is if you hover over any one of these tools, typically a pop-up will happen here, like you can see with the tweener, and it'll show you kind of what this tool actually does. So again, if you've never used Animbot, you can hover over any one of these tools to kind of get a quick example of how you could actually use it. And then we also have things like selection sets. You can see I already have a selection set for all but if you wanted to, you could select, you know, all the tail controls and add those on a specific selection set by hitting new and typing in tail. And then you can see that's going to add that to its own selection set there. And you can also change the color of these and that kind of thing. And you also have this really powerful mirror tool inside of Animbot. You also can copy and paste poses. One of the great things about Animbot is that it will kind of connect multiple Mayas that you have open. So if you actually had two separate Mayas open, and say for example, you wanted to take a specific pose from one scene file to the next and kind of paste it over, you could simply have two Mayas open, open the scene that you want to copy that pose, copy the pose by just pressing this copy pose button, and then open up the other Maya and paste it in there. So it'll actually work across multiple Mayas that you have open. So if you wanted to actually copy and transfer animations between different scene files, you can do that very easily with Animbot. So yeah, if you were only to get one of the scripts or tools or plugins that I have, then I would definitely get Animbot. But I'll go ahead and run through some of the other really powerful uh, tools that I use. And one thing you've probably seen me use quite a bit is this World Bake tool. I'll go ahead and open it up and just give a quick rundown of kind of what you could use it for, kind of the main purpose that I use it for. So let's go ahead and just rotate this control 90 degrees kind of turn this character 90 degrees and I'm doing this on the master control. So you can see the master control down here is going to move the entire character. So we have him translating over. And let's say for example, I wanted to actually keep this exact same animation that I have, but actually put it on the main controls 
of our dyno character here. So things like the root control, this is what we would actually want to turn and rotate. Obviously we would want the feet to move as well. So basically we want this exact same rotation that's happening and it's moving the entire character, but we actually want to bake it off of the master control and put it back onto the root control and the feet controls. So to do that, we can just go ahead and shift select the two foot controls and then that root control. And then I'm gonna go to frame 30 and make sure I lock a keyframe down. So it goes from frame zero to frame 30. And then what I'm gonna do is gonna select my foot controls again, my root control, and then with world bake open, I'm gonna choose bake to locators. And that's actually going to bake all that animation information from those controllers onto these locators. So if I go ahead and scrub forward, you can see the locators are actually moving here. And it looks like we're getting some weird bounce there. And I just need to change these tangent handles there to fix that bounce. But you can see that the locators are now following exactly the movement and the position of the root control here and then the two foot controls. So now that we have those two locators created and baked, we have all of that translation and rotation information put on the locators. What we could then do is go in here and just delete this rotation animation that we have on our master control. Now, when I do that, you can see obviously the character isn't going to move, but you can see those locators are still moving. So all we would need to do is select, let's first select the root control there. I'll choose bake from locator. So it's now taking the locator information and baking it back onto the controller. So I'll go ahead and choose that. And then I'll select both of the foot controls and I'll bake those. And now you can see we have that same animation, but it's been put on the actual controllers, the root control and the two foot controls and taken off the master kind of mover control there. So this world big tool is from Morgan Loomis and he actually has a ton of really powerful scripts in here that you can download. This is where you can actually download the world bake tool. Now, if you go to this website and choose tools, you'll see basically the entire suite of tools. And you can go in here and kind of piecemeal this and just grab specific scripts that you want. So you can come in here and let's say we can select this copy skin. Then you would basically open that up and then you could just choose save as and save this file. And it'll save it as the .py file for you. And we can scroll down here and you can see we have the world bake script. Now, one important thing to keep in mind is that if you are just grabbing very specific scripts in here and not downloading the entire package, you want to make sure you also download this ML utilities. You can see over here a description, a collection of support functions that are required by several of the tools in this library. So things like world bake, you need to actually download the ML utility script as well in order to actually use world bake. So that's something important to keep in mind. But what I actually did, we can come up here and you can choose this download everything. And when you do that, it's going to basically download everything that you need in order to use all of these scripts. So it's going to download all of the scripts. We open up the scripts folder. You can see all of those scripts are downloaded. Now, if you select any one of these, let's go ahead and choose that world big script and open that up. You'll see a description of how to actually get this installed. So one of the first things you'll want to do is make sure you copy and transfer all of these scripts that you just downloaded into wherever you have your documents, Maya scripts folder, place them all in there. And then with each one of these scripts, if you open it up, you'll see basically the command in order to actually run it. So we can see the command right here and you could place this as a button on your shelf, which is what I have. So I have this command running as my button. So if I actually open up Maya again and I'll right click the shelf button, you can see I have that under the command for the shelf button, that same kind of command that was in this description or this sort of installation instructions here. So if you go ahead and download everything, that's probably the easiest way to do this. You can get all the tools here. And also one really helpful thing that comes with this is the actual shelf. And this is actually what I have here, although I've customized it a bit and added some of my own tools in here, but you can go ahead and download the shelf and then add this to your actual shelf in Maya to get a very kind of similar setup that I have here. It'll have things like World Bake and all those things set up. So once you download this, it'll probably be the easiest way to kind of get up and running with the actual scripts that I use up here on my shelf. Now, a couple other things I wanna mention real quick on some of these tools. This tool that I use pretty often is this flip and it'll actually basically just flip the curves and you'll probably see me use that quite a bit in my run cycle tutorial. However, this is actually something that Anambot can do as well. I just typically just use this flip command because I'm just so used to using it. I used it way before I ever had Anambot. So I'm still kind of just accustomed to just going up here and using this flip 
command to kind of flip my curves. But if I go ahead and choose edit, you can see the command that I have here and I'll make sure to put this in the description, but I'll actually show where you can download this particular script because this is an actual script you need. And then this is the command in order to actually run it. So this website is where you can actually get this specific script to flip your curves. And you can see the description here, flips currently selected keys over the X axis. So what you wanna do is download this script, put it in your scripts folder, and then use that command here. And it should be in kind of the instruction files for that script, but you'll just use this command. And I'll make sure to actually put this in the description below as well, all of these website links and that kind of thing. So you can grab it much easier. And this other tool that I have that I use quite a bit right here is just showing plus and minus. Now let me go in here and add just a few keyframes in here. And this allows me to retime everything really quickly. So let's say for example, we wanted to add some time between frame 13 and frame 19. Typically what you could do is come in here, select frame 19, you'll do a drag selection by just clicking, holding shift down and clicking. And that will kind of drag a selection around all of those keyframes. So if I'm adjusting the frames between 13 and 19, I'll wanna shift all of the frames after that over as well, which means I'll have to do this sort of box selection and then kind of shift everything over like that. So I'm able to add those extra frames in between this one transition, but then keep the same timing after the fact for the rest of the animation here. So that's one way we can do it. But this button right here allows me to just come in here really anywhere between 13 and 21 now. I can place my cursor anywhere in here. And if I hit this plus icon, it's going to basically shift everything over one frame every time I click this. So you can see if I wanna go in here and add a couple frames, I'm selecting this button and it's adding that extra frame in here and then shifting everything over in front of it as well. And then what I can do is choose the minus button and that's going to shift everything the opposite direction. And in order to use this, I'll go ahead and just right click and choose edit. And you can see the command that I'm using and I'll make sure to actually add this command in the description below. And you can go ahead and take this and, and use this for your adding a key. And then this one over here for subtracting or removing a key. And you can just add this button to your shelf with this command and you should be able to use that very easily. Now the last couple tools I wanna to point out real quickly, I might not use them as often in some of my videos, but they are really, really helpful. This one right here is LM Spring, which allows you to get some like jiggle and sort of dynamic rotation automatically in your animation. And I can go ahead and test this real quick. And let me go ahead and just add like a bit of like rough, really rough animation in here. And I actually have a full video on using LM Spring to get some just free animation using this sort of dynamic sim setup. So I'll go ahead and just add some rough up and down animation. And then I'll select this hip control. I'll go to LM Spring, I'll go to translation. I'll choose everything default, previs, bake it. It's gonna bake it onto an animation layer. And then what you'll see is we're getting this like jiggle happening here, running this sim over it. So this is really awesome to get some more polish in there. And again, you can check out my video on how I actually use this. You also have the option for rotation. And let me go ahead and actually open up where you can download this. I'll go ahead and link this in the description below so you can grab this yourself. It's a free script. This is something, again, that's really helpful to adding on those nice polishy details to your animation really, really easily. I'll go ahead and close that out. And the other thing that I wanna take a look at is this overlapper. This is another type of dynamic sim tool which is really great for quickly animating tails and that kind of thing. You can adjust the softness of it. You can adjust the scale and go here to options and you can choose to add actual translation to it. You can choose a cycle. So if you wanna actually run this on, you know, a tail animation for your character and it's actually maybe like a walk cycle or a run cycle, you can choose cycle. So it'll make sure that the first and last pose is exactly the same when running this dynamic simulation. And this is where you can download this plugin. This is actually a $20 plugin, but again, it does speed up the process quite a bit and make things and make animating things like tails a lot faster. So again, I'll make sure to link this in the description below. So I think that's pretty much all of the main scripts and plugins and tools that I use when I'm animating. Hopefully you'll be able to download the same ones that I have here so that you'll be able to follow along 
with the videos that I make a little bit easier so I'm not using specific tools that you don't have. Now things like Animbot, if you don't wanna spend that extra money, I definitely understand that. But usually when I'm using Animbot, especially in my videos, I usually stick to things like the tween tool, maybe the copy and paste tool as well, things that you can still do in Maya without Animbot, but obviously Animbot does make that a whole lot faster. So hopefully this video gave you all the information you need in order to actually download and start using all of the tools and plugins that I use in my own workflow.